Hello and welcome back to Severe MMA and today I'm lucky enough to be joined by Mama B herself, Shauna Bannon is with me. Um, Shauna, how are you doing? Thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm great. Doing good. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, I guess the last time we were talking, I think, was uh, ahead of your professional debut against Kerry Isom. Um, you're not doing too bad for yourself since then. Two <laughs> belts, two wins, uh, and a bunch of options on your plate. Um, how is, how is, I guess, how is your experience in your first and your second professional fight? Maybe if you wanted to start, you know, a Cage Legacy 15, it was in Tala, it was the perfect way to start your professional career in front of uh, your home t crowd and and, and yeah. picking up a belt and everything like that it must have been really special. Yeah, it was an unbelievable night. Like reflecting back now, I think like for the couple of weeks after, I didn't actually realize what had happened. But like that's a moment that's going to stick with me forever. Like it's just when I walked out and just like even I was looking and there was people there that I actually didn't even expect to be there. People that I went to school with and all like that. I haven't spoke to in years and it was just the place literally went on fire when I walked out and getting the win, like I was extremely nervous, like, cause there was a lot of pressure on, like literally everyone that was there was waiting for me. And I don't think I've ever been as nervous for a fight before in my life. Like when we were waiting in the dressing room, like I was just walking up and down, I was looking out and Dublin bus has gone by and I'm like, this is just mad. Like I was like, what <laughs> the fuck is happening? But like it was an unbelievable night. Like that win, it it just meant a lot to me. Like there was a lot that happened before that for me to get to that stage, and it just like there was like a sigh of relief after you know. Like it was um, like I had like me pregnancy and everything, which put a lot of stuff on hold for, mm -hmm. and it was a very hard period of time for me to kind of accept. I suppose that everything was paused, and when it was paused, I actually couldn't see past that. Like I thought my career was over at one stage. Like, I was like, I'm not going to come back from this. Like, I'm like, it's not going to be possible. How am I going to look after a child and train the way I want to train and get to where I want to get? And like, I obviously, as soon as I started MMA, I knew I wanted to be professional and go to the top way. And like, that was all just put on hold for nine months. And it was like, it was a struggle. Like, I don't think I accepted I was pregnant until I was about 20 weeks. So like, I think all the amateur fights after that, where like I was just like an autopilot but that one was kind of like I just kind of realized what I had achieved since I had Jason it was just like it was very real yeah, what you've achieved has been absolutely unbelievable Sean like I, I seen your Instagram post today and you're saying like a year ago you hadn't even fought since you've had your son and yeah. then now you're seven and zero uh as a mother and you yeah. know with some amateur wins and some professional wins and picking up titles I mean that's unbelievable, right? Really, like I, I just think it's unreal. So, so fair play to you. It must feel like, like thinking back today, you know, it's crazy. You've had a hell of a year, like. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like I think for so long of it, I was in autopilot, like especially like when I was training after coming back from Jace, like he was the worst sleeper in the world. Like he was dreadful. I used to get probably two hours broken sleep and that like people are probably like, yeah, right. But I'm not even exaggerating. Like last there, I used to collect her and we'd be driving to train and I'd be like a zombie. And then she'd be like, are you okay? I'm like, I don't know, but we're, we're moving. <laughs> like it was just like, it was a mad, mad time. But like, look at it now. Like I'm just like, I'm so grateful for actually just everyone that was there for me through all that process. and getting me to where I am now and helping me every day like my mom my friends and it's just all my training partners coaches like it's just it's imagine but I'm so grateful for them all yeah I bet and uh, I was going to ask you about that I might ask you a little bit later on just about the people that you have around you but uh I'm just curious like you know those adjustments that you do have to make being a mother trained to be professional and, and looking to get to the to absolute top as well it's it's a fine balancing act like really and like how I, I this is a question I was looking to ask you. It was like, how can you turn the switch from being a loving, caring mother to then getting into kill mode in the gym, in fights and everything like that? Is that is that kind of a process that you have to go through? Because like there's a stark contrast between the two, like where you know you yeah. have to be the loving mother and then you have to go in and take someone's head off then in the gym or, or in a fight. Some people think that it's like that could have been a difficult thing, but for me, that actually it wasn't difficult at all because I'm doing this for Jace. So it's like if I'm fighting someone, I'm like, you're trying to take money off my table for me and my son. 
so it actually just happens naturally it's just like you just go into that kill mode and it's like no this is what I'm here for and I don't even think twice about it like when you're when you're boxing the head off someone it's like look they, they signed up to be there I signed up to be here could be the opposite way around but obviously it hasn't been for me in my past few fights luckily and um, so like that's the game that's the game like we're both signing up for the same thing and whoever I'd rather be them than me yeah exactly I'd rather <laughs> I'd rather them than them than me as well yeah <laughs> but, uh, yeah um I I I think that yeah it's I just think it's crazy I can't wrap my head around obviously I, I, I'll never be um a mother I'm not a parent yet but um yeah just sort of fascinating you know to go from because I, you, you can see you're very open and, and you share your experience that you've had with Chase uh throughout yeah since you was born and you can see that love inside and that care inside of you it was just really curious to see what if there is a, a switch that does trip but you use it for motivation and and, and that's yeah. a good thing as well and yet you mentioned that nerves and and the process that you go through like i mean you ahead of your your fight with chia toy you released a, a video a 10 minute video just kind of with a little bit of background and what you before the fight and you during the fight and you after the fight um, what's going through your head in the dressing room? Um, is it all the nerves? Yeah. Yeah. The dressing room is the toughest time for me because I think it's like, that's it. You're there now. You're about to walk. So it's like everything has gone through your mind. Stress, anxiety, worry. What if? Have I done enough? Is it like, you know, all these things are going through your head. But I think like, obviously everyone's nervous. Like if, if someone says they're not nervous they're lying like you're going out there to fight someone you're getting locked in a cage and they're basically trying to kill you like let's call a spade a spade that's what's happening so like if anyone says they're not nervous they're lying but there's obviously i think a lot more in stake when you're professional like i definitely noticed the difference in my nerves from amateur to professional because nobody wants their zero taken away from them in amateur i accepted that i was an apprentice i was learning my trades i was working my way up every fight there was different style fighters that I had like matched myself against on purpose and Paddy has picked for me on purpose to be in different scenarios and be under pressure in different places. And like, you're obviously going out there to win, but if you lose, it's not the end of the day. Like, I think I have three losses on my amateur record. Well, one of them actually should be taken away. I have to look into that. That girl that I fought in the final of the IMFs in 2019 had five pro fights. Before, oh well, yeah, I heard that. I heard that actually. Yeah. Felicia was telling me about that. That's that's so mental. That yeah, needs yeah. to be actually rectified. I need to follow up on that. But um, like them losses, I was obviously devastated when I lost. But I learned so much from each of them. And like obviously, my last amateur loss, I got pregnant after. So there was a long time before I could redeem myself. You know, and uh, yeah, it's just I think with the pro, your loss is with you for life so you don't want to get that like if you're looking for if let's say Dane is looking at someone and they're six now or six and one even though that person has one more fight that's a loss you're going to look at the six and no person over the six and one so you don't want to lose so there's obviously all them stress and worries and anxieties going on that you're like ah but I think like I never like leave anything undone so I know my preparation has always been there so that gives me the kind of sense that like I I'm good and when I go to walk I actually get like release like the, it's yeah. like I'm like I'm tense and then when I walk I'm like I could see that you could, you could see yeah. it in the video it's like there's like you look at and I I know it's like it's you, you're nervous and there's a bunch of thoughts going on backstage but you hit you you hit the stage it seemed like yeah that you were more relaxed and then again yeah. when you get into the cage it's more like excitement and you can't wait for what's going to happen next is it yeah a hundred percent that that dressing room is the, gonna be the death of me one of these days like that is the worst part of the whole like it's nearly up there with the wake up like that's how bad it is yeah yeah <laughs> that's yeah. the worst part but when my song comes on and i'm walking out and i'm like i'm in the element then this is like this is time for me to have fun i love the walk i love like the buzz with the song and all whatever song you chose and then when i get into the cage that's me having fun like it's the weight process before it where you're like oh but when i'm actually in there i love it it's what i love to do so i'm enjoying myself 100 percent. that's great to see and look the the fight against curry uh was down in the um in in the strawweight division the last fight was in uh the flyweight division um going forward 
what division are you hoping to kind of compete at both divisions as well or just yeah. see what comes your way yeah like um obviously if it was a fight that popped up fast flyweight i can make in a week like i walk around at like 60 ish so flyweight is easy for me to make straw weight i have to do a comp like i need it like it's it's difficult and it's obviously more difficult to having a toddler that's wired and mad and like needs yeah. energy from me so uh it's doable like and i'm definitely going to do it again it's just i need a, a like a full eight to ten weeks to know that i'm making that because it's not something that i can do fast and i don't want to ever do a fast either because i used to cut weight stupidly when i was in taekwondo and kickboxing and like there was a stage where i didn't have a period for two years and like i obviously damaged my body and i don't want to do that again i can make straw weight safely by doing it slowly and steady um so i would never be stupid and take a short or last minute fight a straw weight because i know that i need to do it right you know like I, yeah. I only had like yeah. one and a bit kilo water weight to cut for a straw weight because right, I dieted right. properly the whole camp. Do you know what I mean? So I don't, yeah. I don't like losing drastic amounts of weight by water. Like I try and diet down and then lose like the little bit. And then sure, I think like I, when I was fighting in the cage, I was back up to sixty kilo. Yeah, but you can pull After it back. Away. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, the wow. reload. Once you do it right and you know what you're doing, like you can reload proper. Like I back on the way fairly fast i was talking to kerry after it and i was like i was 60 kilos fighting she was like yeah i could feel it on top of me <laughs> I was like, Ooh. <laughs> but, but yeah in like when you're preparing to go in there uh like how important to you is it to have someone like paddy hoolan there beside you uh, you know, I, 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 I seen him in that video and i'm sure he does it on a consistent basis is offering your words of advice there by your side at all times and sarah as well you know those are the two main your, your main training partner and your coach i mean um that's a, a a solid tight-knit group that you have there in the gym uh and th the vibe i get from it is a real family based it's like yeah, it's you're, just you're, you're, you they're like my family yeah yeah they are like i the trust that we have with each other i think it's so important like people do say it like they're like when he says something when you're fighting you do it straight away and it's because i have trust in him and i believe in what he's saying and like he never says something that we we haven't done before so like he could say something in a fight and i'm like yeah that's something that we done two tuesdays ago and blah 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 and i know what to do and uh like with sarah as well like she's like my little sister but like we're, we're literally like family do you know what i mean um i only know them four years but it's like i know them my whole life and um, they they want what's best for me and i want what's best for them and they've been there for me through my hardest times and like I'm just I'm so grateful like I don't think I actually don't think that there's anyone else that has a better team than me like I'm so lucky like the people that I have like we have that connection that it's like family but then also we have it like it's business do you know what I mean yeah we can separate the two from each other and um I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for them yeah. Chelsea as well like Chelsea Paddy's girlfriend, like it, it, they're just so so good to me. Like I'd be lost without them. That's great. Now you can really see that sense and 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 how close you guys are when you know the small video footage that we do see and uh, when Paddy is talking and when you were talking in other in interviews as well, it really comes across and it's great to see. And, and you know, one thing I think is is super important as well, and I, I love to see you doing it is is you getting out to other gyms as well. Uh, you know, we only talked about uh, you heading out to. Um, Malaga next week and, and stuff like that and I think you know we came up in a time where loyalty was a big thing for gyms and, and sometimes you would have been shunned upon if you wanted to go and train at another gym or or come like just get another role or another spa or whatever mm. but I, I think it's very good that you know Paddy is encouraging you to go to other gyms and get different looks and everything like that because like that much you must feel the same as well. I must feel that that's important for the development of a fighter. Like, yeah, a hundred percent. Like, but Paddy, Paddy knows and he has trust in me like that. I'm not, maybe back in the day, it was like, oh, maybe they're going there because they might move to that gym. And like, I'm loyal. I'm with HMA forever. Like I'm never going to be under another gym, like TMA and HMA, like they're my gyms, you know? Um, and like, I go over and train with Molly as well. And it's, it's just different. Like, she's a ufc fighter and like that's where i'm hoping to be so if i can get an opportunity to train with her and hopefully i'm helping her and she's helping me why not like it's literally a 20 minute playing journey and then going over to spain like i haven't been there before but i've heard great things about that gym, the, yeah, the it's, it's gym. putting yourself outside of your comfort zone as well like 
Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I remember the first time me and Sarah went over to Molly's. We were in the taxi on the way to the gym, and we were like, felt like it was like a fight, and we <laughs> yeah, were like yes. sweat, and we were like, oh my god! But then everyone's so sound and lovely. Like so, it's just like it's like going from our gym to another gym. Do you know what I mean? They're so sound there, and next gen, all the coaches. And trying to partner it's like they're sound yeah yeah no, i can i bet it's a fantastic gym over there and like you know it's great to have somebody like molly mccann as well you know to offer some advice you know uh obviously training with someone as skillful as her is going to benefit you as well but always so uh, she's someone who's always uh, has forged the path for herself to the ufc as well so i'm sure she can offer you some advice both inside and outside the cage as well 100% she definitely can and it's even like her energy to be around you know like she's a good buzz and she gives you that them good energies when you're going into training and I've learned loads from her already by the like we've went over only a couple of times she came over here and I've learned so much from her already even just our mindset and the way she approaches things it's just like yeah you take little bits of that from her you're like I need to be more like that yeah yeah perfect um so um you're you're coming back off two title wins from cage legacy and you have lots of options on the table right now um yeah. so what are those options what what are you thinking right now where are you at currently or where are you going to be is probably the biggest question that everybody wants to know yeah so i'd like to fight again before the end of september definitely hopefully sooner august or september um i have offers from ksw Invicta, Combat Global, and then recently Aries reached out to me as well. So over the weekend, I'm just going to get them all out, pros and cons to everything, and see what's best for me and Jace, because at the end of the day, I need to provide for him. Um, like originally, I had the idea in my head to do one fight deal, but I think when you do that with different companies, your pay kind of doesn't increase um by bouncing from one to the other whereas if you stick with one you kind of get more per fight um so i think like until the ufc um i'm gonna go with either of these four i think they're the best four that have um reached out to me and i just kind of need to figure out what's best for me really um i'm obviously getting paddy's opinion as well and taking his advice from what he's saying he's reaching out to people and getting opinions from others and so yeah, there's a lot to be taught about because like I'm obviously signing into something and I don't want to do something and be stuck in somewhere that I'm not happy with. Um, but I think I've had conversations and negotiations with them all and they've all kind of came back with better things already. So I'm just waiting on one more and then I'm going to put them all out, pros and cons, and make my choice. Nice. It's a nice predicament to have. Um, <laughs> and, you, and you said, you know, you're, you're really a focal point in making these decisions. Um, one yeah. thing that I've noticed and we've spoke about before, uh, and I, I may use Leah McCourt as an example, who doesn't have any management, but she handles her own business dealings and she's done fantastically well in doing so. I think, yeah. you know, both opportunities inside the cage and outside the cage that she's created for herself. Mm -hmm. Would you be looking at somebody like her as, as kind of inspiration, if you want, or, or, or guidance on, on what way you want to do your dealings when it comes? Because these are pretty big decisions at the end of the day yeah they are but I think like nobody's going to be able to make a better decision than yourself because you're good you always know what you're good like I've spoke to a couple of uh, different management agencies that have reached out to me and I get the contracts off them and I'm like you're benefiting more here than me why would I like the opportunities are coming to me so unless they're bringing something significant why would you sign with someone like I think it just it doesn't make sense like people think it's a good thing to sign with a, a management agency and they announce that and they get a post on their instagram and like they are big and like nothing to put them down obviously some people have managers but like the management agencies that have reached out to me are probably like in the top three top four with the ones that have and like people think signing with them and announcing it that's a big deal but a big deal is making money with a company if they're not yeah if they're not actually bringing anything to the table signing a piece of paper with them you're signing like basically like they own you nearly yeah it, it's do, like if you actually read through contracts it's mad so could you ever see yourself being represented like as as you pick up the wins and as as things like get more you know up and going like i mean ufc fights everything like that you you're you're confident enough that you will be able to to make the right call each and every time and that's what you want to do you want to be kind of the master of your own ship like 
I might have to get a manager at some stage in my career, but definitely not right now. I don't think that brings any benefits to me. I think if I'm extremely busy when I have my UFC contract and it, there might be a stage where I will need one then, um, but I'll be making a very, very close call on it. I might have my dad, my manager, because he reads <laughs> yeah. through all the contracts for wouldn't, me. <laughs> wouldn't be the worst guy to have. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Honestly, whenever I get something, I'm like, you read that and come back to me because like, you're, you're kind of like when you're reading through all the different ones, you're like, oh, but I think when you get another eye on it, and Paddy has read through a few for me as well, it's just like, yeah, I don't know. I just don't think I trust anyone in that sense that it's like, it's a lot. Yeah. Like it's a, when you actually read through the management uh, things, it's like, what? Yeah. I, and I get this and I get this and I get this and I get this. And it's like, but you're doing nothing. Why do you deserve that? But you're like, what do I get? You're telling yeah. me what you get. <laughs> yeah. Like, I swear, unless they're bringing something significant, I can't see myself. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I think uh, people are actually mad. Who, who's leading the race for your signing right now as we're talking? Um, in regards to communicating with them? No, in regards to, you know, you said you had the four options with Combat KSW. Oh, I don't know. You, you don't know yet? You're not I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll see. I, I'd say it'd be an out soon, and anyways, I'm not going to drag it out much longer because I, I need to get my next fight booked. I don't want to be, like, dragging it along, but um, I'd say before the end of next week. Nice, I'll and you're looking, to to fight in, you're looking to fight in September? Yeah, well, between the four of them, there's cards in August and September, so it'll be either one. Right, right. And then what's the rest of the year looking like for you after that? Um, I definitely want to fight again twice before the end of the year, possibly five if it happens. Yeah, nice. And look, at you're all talk about the UFC. That's where you want to go. That's the goal. And, and That's the end there's goal. nothing stopping you to get in there, is there? I will be there. Yeah. 100 percent. when when yeah. is the perfect timeline for you to do that i'd like to obviously have a few more fights so like five and all six and all i'd be happy to go to the ufc then um like i think there's still a few little things that i want to tweak like i'm tweaking them and trying them, but i haven't actually yeah done. it was actually going to be my, one of my next questions was that you know since moving over obviously the transition there's different things you already talked about the mental side when it comes to the training what were the biggest kind of things that you kind of had to bring into your game, obviously, elbow introduction of elbows, longer rounds. Um, if I was to ask you, what do you feel that you need to improve on most at this stage in your career? Um, I think, like, my last two fights, I kind of, like, I'm doing kickboxing 24 years and I'm grappling four years. My last few fights, I keep bringing it to the ground. <laughs> so... I would like to actually just show a little bit more of my striking because I feel like it was nearly like I had a point to prove. Yeah, so you, you definitely did things. because in, <laughs> after your first fight, you tweeted back at me after the win and I said it was a great grappling uh, showcase and you were like, yeah, not just the striker. So yeah. you definitely had that point to prove for sure in your first few professional fights that, you know, you're you're more well-rounded than people might think. Yeah, 100%. But like those two girls, I could have knocked out with like a nice highlight reel. Do you know what I mean? Um, so like probably like stop just feeling like I have a point to prove to people and actually just go out and do what's best. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously yeah. I'm well more experienced in the striking than I am in grappling, but I, I keep going there. And um, so, yeah, now I think my next few fights, I'd like to kind of get like maybe a spinning kick knockout, like something, something nice. Yeah, something that yeah. I've done for my whole life, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm working more on, just sticking more to, like, I obviously try and everything, everything, but, like, when I actually go out there, kind of focus more on my game plan and such, rather than, like, she engaged with the clinch in the last one and I took her down on ground and pound instead of, like, disengaging and knocking her out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, I'd like to kind of focus more on that for my next few fights, 100%. In regards to the change from amateur to pro with my training, I trained like a pro when I was amateur. So that hasn't really, I obviously had to introduce elbows, which I wouldn't have done as much um, as amateur. I'm obviously doing a lot more now, the elbows and knees to the head and positioning and stuff like that. Um, and the longer rounds and sparring. Um, that was kind of the change. So I switched up my cardio a little bit for the longer rounds. But other than that, like I trained like a pro when I was amateur. So yeah it was the same still yeah. change twice a day every day do you know yeah 100 percent. right now i think 
women's MMA in Ireland is probably at the best level it's ever been at. And uh, since, you know, obviously there's been, there's loads of women that have come through and loads of women that are competing right now. What do you feel about the current state of women, women's MMA in Ireland? 100%. Even since I had my first MMA fight, what, in 2019, like there was no girls. They were all kind of, all the ones that are fighting now were kind of obviously maybe at the start. So I really struggled to get fights, but like there's loads of them now to actually fight each other. There's loads of straw weights, loads of bantam weights, or sorry, loads of fly weights, loads of bantam weights to all just bounce off each other one fight one weekend and the next. And it's just, it's great to see the growth um, because like they're the next generation. And it like, it the, when people say next generation, it switches over very fast. It does, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I think with MMA, it's, like people have let's say 10 fights if you're a girl mm -hmm. that would be probably like the average and then you switch to pro so a lot of them are on the way up especially that they're going to the IMAX and stuff because you get so many fights in the one weekend and then there's the four nations this weekend as well isn't it I don't know if there's any yeah. girls going to I think Sinead's gone isn't she that's right yeah um yeah. so like she'd probably get maybe two or three fights this weekend I don't know how many is in her division but like that's the build and build and build like if you're getting fights that fast and you're building in between them and you're growing like the switch over to pro doesn't take as long as people actually think it is do you know what i mean it's not yeah. like the way boxing is or where you go to the olympics and then you go pro or because we don't have the olympics in mma so the transition happens quite fast so um it'd be great to see like the next few years it's going to be just more and more and more and it's great because like, look at the Americans. They have fucking hundreds of girls that fight, whereas Ireland, small little island, we don't have that many. So it's great to see more people coming through. It definitely is, and, and it's definitely a bright future as well. And, you know, we spoke about Sarah, Sarah Kearney, and, and I, I want to speak a little bit maybe about Nadine Abbott-Bissett as well. The three of you, uh, you train together, you hang out together, you're, you're, you're training partners, you're friends, your family, yeah. if you want to call it that way. Um, how important is it to you to have two of those women by your side um through it and, and and how important is it to you for for you to be able to help them get to where where they need to get to obviously nadine has a, a combat global debut and she's turned pro this year as well and um experiencing and go through all of this with with the two women uh, sarah and nadine yeah it's amazing because they get it do you know what i mean you know like all the different emotions and stuff. like sometimes on fight week like you're around like your normal friends and they they don't like they get what you're going through because they've been there around years but they don't get it get it. whereas nadine and sarah get it because they've been in my shoes do you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. when you're doing your weight cut and you're doing in the lead up or even in camp like in the middle of camp if something goes wrong and everyone's been there where they felt like that when they've had it so like you can relate to them so much more and like it's like sometimes when you're like having hard days you don't want to be around people that actually don't understand it because you're like you just don't get it like my mom just be like to me on fight week, you're a demon she just says clear me she's like <laughs> good luck especially when i'm cutting weight so like it's just so good to have them there and we we all have the same goals we all have the same ambitions and we're but we're all driven and it's just great to actually have them and we all got on together as well there's no bitchiness there's no we're just we're all very similar um yeah. It, so like, like a, something that I've found in life that is very beneficial and from what I've seen, you definitely have it as well, is building that support network around yourself. People that want to build you up and not pull you down. And yeah. with your family and with your friends and with your training partners and your gym, you seem to have that all figured out right now. And that's what that's the sense that I'm getting looking from the outside in. Yeah, 100%. Like, I think if you're not happy in your environment, like you're you're in the gym every day. So if you're not happy in the environment that you're working in, essentially, like you're not going to be happy and you're not going to enjoy the journey. Like I was only talking to Paddy about it earlier on. He was like, and enjoy the journey. And I was like, no, I'm actually enjoying every second of this. Even the hard parts, like I still enjoy because I'm like, I know where I'm going to. I know where it's leading to. I know things are happening because such and such. And it's like, like he was like, look at all the opportunities that after just falling on your doorstep now. And he was like, we spoke about this. Like he was like, you started four years ago. Would you think that you're going to be where you are now four years ago? I was like, no. Like I was, I came in and I was blitzing because that's what you're doing in kickboxing. I'd be blitzing and then people would be double legging me and shoving me on my head. And I was like, yeah, that's no, that's no crack. <laughs> no, I'm normally good at this. And why, why am I got? I was a beginner again. Like I was a beginner again. It's a yeah. different sport. Like it's completely different. Although I done striking for years, the style of striking that I done 
was point fighting so it was stop start stop start and then I did do continuous as well but like my main one that I done was point fighting so it's completely different and the stance is different your posture is different there was no leg kicks so when people were kicking me in the legs I was like eh, what are you doing <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> get off me leg but like it, it there was so many different things and like I think I could have bounced and be like fuck this I'm not being shit at something but I was like, no, I had an interest in that. And I was like, why? And what? I just kept asking questions. And I was so, like, I constantly think about jujitsu. Like, it wouldn't get out of my brain. Like, I'd be in work and I'd be like, but what if I had it on that? And, and then I'd be like, totally gone off on like a rant in my head. And like, it was just addictive from day one. Yeah, it's crazy how it can do that to you, man. That's uh, one, one thing I noticed actually after your last fight, I meant to ask you, you were, you were celebrating, yeah. Uh, all like place was gone wild and i noticed in the video the live stream that you went up to hug someone and they had a big bar of chocolate there <laughs> waiting for you <laughs> i i can't remember maybe it was a dairy milk grant like that and i know we that talked was about... galaxy ripple it was a galaxy, galaxy ripple. Ripple. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that do you have someone there now that specially gives you chocolate after every fight or what's going on <laughs> Oh stop! That was Sarah. So Sarah was obsessed with Galaxy Ripples <laughs> in camp. So I think someone gave it to her, but then she was giving it to me <laughs> every Friday after sparring. It was her treat to have a Galaxy Ripple, and for weeks she thought she was like, uh, "Yeah, I have one of them after training. That's me little thing once a week and all." And I was like, "Yeah, grand." And then like she kept talking about it for weeks, and then one of the days she was like, "Like they're only ninety eight calories," and I was like. Sarah like that <laughs> not 98 <laughs> calories but she was like reading the wrong amount of grams so it was like double it was like 200 and oh, she was like she oh my god my macros have been wrong it's like she made weight anyway so it was grand but it was just funny but that was the galaxy ripple situation yeah it's hilarious because I, yeah, I just saw <laughs> I didn't that. even get to eat them in the end someone took them ah Jesus that's horrid oh my god and then so... do you know what else happened actually with food that night so I was around talking to everyone or whatever and Nadine and all were sitting at a table her sister was there and her brother and uh, she came over, she's like, Sean, we got your pizza. And I was like, oh, lovely. There was like fucking about six boxes of pizza, garlic bread, chips, sides, loads, like loads of food. And she, her brother or her sister's brother was paying for it. It was like eight euro or something. And uh, we sat down. I was like, that's fucking a lot of food. And she's like, Sean. And I was like, what? She, he was, that's not our order. I was like, what? He, he, she was like, that man just came in and said he ordered pizza. And they were like, yeah. And then some woman came out and she was like, is that my pizza? And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh I've my got God. into a big pepperoni pizza. And she was like, they're all the toppings that we got, like the chicken and the peppers and the pepperoni. And the... and I was like, I'm going to die. Jeez, you nearly <laughs> have to strap on the gloves. You're going to get in another fight, uh, uh, fighting over the pizza. Oh, after. stop. <laughs> Nadine was like, no way. We ordered that as well. Chicken dippers, we got that too. Garlic bread, yeah, we got that as well. That's mad. We had the exact same order and all. I was like, I'm going to die. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Well, More <laughs> oh my god I did the cheeky one <laughs> that's that's for sure that's for sure uh, <laughs> well it was great to get to to chat to you again today Shauna and um you know I wish you all the best in in the decision and looking forward to see where you end up um and what your next step is you have some good options in front of you right now and um yeah hopefully we'll get to to chat to you again in, in in another few weeks after the decision has been made maybe you're ahead of your next fight and uh I wish you all the best uh you're heading out to Malaga training next week now, so hopefully that goes well, and uh, yeah. hopefully your preparations for your next fight go well too, and we'll talk to you sometime down the line. Brilliant. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no problem at all, Sean. All the best. Chat to you soon.